We'll be working on this zigzag Swarovski crystal tennis bracelet. And I call it zigzag because it kind of zigs and zags. And I came uh, upon this design by accident, which is a long story. Maybe I'll tell it later. <laughs> but we, we will be starting with I'm going to be using these colors, which is kind of a, a teal. These are four millimeter Mayuki cubes, four millimeter Swarovski crystal bicones. Now you don't need to use Swarovski crystal. You can use another crystal, check beads, round beads. And I'm using a rainbow color seed bead. Now we'll be finishing off on this bracelet, which I kind of thought was Christmassy colors. There's uh, four colors in that bracelet. But just to get you started, to show you how to, get, how to do it, it's really very easy. You just need a little bit of patience and a little bit of time. One of my favorite things about this bracelet is actually the seed beaded toggle that I make for it, which is perfect for people that have um, metal allergies. So if you want to make a Christmas present for somebody with metal allergies, I'm going to do that seed beaded toggle in a separate video. We'll be finishing this other bracelet off by putting on a brass magnetic clasp. So let's get started with how to do this. And here's just a couple more of that bracelet. I made one in all white. I made one with a... Uh, emerald greens and blues and jet AB actually it's double jet AB and if you prefer not to do it zigzag this is what it looks like if you just put uh, two crystals in between each cube bridge is what I call them but I'm going to show you the zigzag design and then explain the difference between the two so I've already threaded my needle. I was going to demonstrate it again on uh, camera, and I tried, but for some strange reason, I could not see. I have to hold it really close to my, to my eyes to see it, and I always wind up going out of camera. So what I do, just in case you haven't seen a video before, is we're trying to put a round thread and this is fire line by the way don't ever try to use just regular thread this is uh, very very strong I use a six pound and it's like it's a beaded uh, braided beading thread and it's kind of it's strong enough to use I think in parachute cord now I lost my place okay trying to put a round thread into a rectangular hole. What I normally do is that you can use your teeth, I don't advise it, your fingernails. I use a little flat nose plier and I just pull the thread right through and I flatten the thread. So now it is the same shape, I don't know if you could see it, the same shape as the eye of the needle. Yeah, I'm sure you can't see that. But anyway, I have mine threaded. And we start with making one of these bridges, I call them. It's three four millimeter cubes, but we start by picking up two four millimeter cubes, slide them down, leaving about a six inch tail. And I would grab, I grab the uh, end of the thread and keep a hold on those two beads. Now we have one on top of the other. What we do, we're coming out the top. We're going to go back through those two beads and we're going to pull our thread through. And if you start with two yards of thread, um, that would probably be enough to finish the bracelet. But if you're not comfortable with that, then use a shorter thread and I'll show you how to add thread. 
but we've gone back through, pulled our thread a little bit. You, if you can see, the thread is laying on the side of those two beads. What we're doing is we're pulling that thread so they sit next to each other. Now they're nestled right next to each other. It's coming out the second bead. We're going back up through the first bead and then back down through the second bead. So it's nice and secure. And like I said, these bridges are three beads wide. So we're going to pick up one more. Let it fall down. We're coming out the bottom of the second bead. Let's get this uh, hanging thread out of the way. We're coming out of the bottom of the second bead. We're going to take our needle with our cube added. We're going to go back through the top of that second bead and pull till they're sitting next to each other. Then we'll go back up through that bead we just added and we have the beginning of our bracelet, our first bar. So to do the zigzag, well actually we are doing a zigzag bracelet but on each end of the zigzag bracelet uh, is a little different than the center of it. So we start off with two crystals and a seed bead on either side. So we start with a seed bead, a crystal, a seed bead, a crystal, and another seed bead. You don't have to slide them down yet, but I just want to show you. I need to move this out of my way. It's blocking my view. Okay, then we are going to start our second bridge. We're going to pick up two cubes for the beginning of our second bridge. Slide them down. And just as before with the other bridge, let's hold these things out of the way. I've got pull them taut so that they're nestled nice and tight against each other. We're coming out of the top of the two cubes. We're going to go back through the bottom of the two cubes. Make sure not to go through the seed bead. This is the uh, and we're going to pull that and make sure that it's nice and tight that there's no space. And again, we're going to pull it down so that they're sitting right next to each other. Make sure this is all nice and tight. Then we're going to go back up through that first cube bead, back down through the second cube bead, and we're going to pick up a third cube bead. We're coming out of the bottom of the second cube bead. We've added another cube bead. We're going to go back through the top of the second cube bead, pull it till it's sitting right next to the other two, go back up through that last cube bead that we just added, and here, because we want to be in the center, just so things don't get too complicated. We go back down through the middle of that bridge. So now we're coming out of the middle cube bead. Now this thing just is flip-flopping over. Doesn't matter. Now we're in a position where we're going to fill in between the bars, the cube bead bars. So we're going to pick up a seed bead, a crystal, a seed bead, a crystal, and a seed bead. We're coming out of the center cube bead and going down through 
the first bar, the second seed bead, second cube bead, sorry. Too many beads. Okay. And my end is getting in my way here to show you. So now we're going to go, we still have one space to fill in. We're going to go back up through, let me move this up a little bit, back up through this first empty space, through the cube bead. And we're going to fill that in by picking up one seed bead, one crystal, a seed bead, and a crystal and another seed bead so that there's uh, seed bead crystal seed bead crystal seed bead and we're going back up through we want to fill this space in we're going back through that cube bead added now at this point like I said before the beginning and the end of the bracelet so that they kind of are um, flat and even so that you, when you're wearing it, it doesn't look cockeyed. We start the zigzag pattern. We just use two between all the cube beads on the first and the last. The rest of the bracelet is zigzag, so we start with only one crystal between between our cube bead bars. So we're going to pick up one seed bead, one crystal, one seed bead, and we're going to start building our cube bead bar by picking up two cube beads. Slide them all down. making sure that you're holding the uh, thread tight, the thread that's coming out of them, and you're going to go back up through those two cube beads. And remember to pull that thread tight and pull it through. We have our thread coming along the sides just pull it down so they're sitting next to each other. Go back up through the first cube bead, back down through the second, and we're going to pick up another cube bead to finish our, that one's a little cockeyed, finish our cube bead bar. So I picked up the cube bead coming out of the bottom of the second cube bead going back through the top of it pulling tight and those that last one will sit right next to it so now there are three together we're going to go back up through that one we just added and then back down through the second one the middle one because this is where we're going to be building our zigzag now we've started with just one crystal with a seed bead on either side. Now we're going to do two. If you uh, look in this bracelet, you can see there's the pattern is one, one crystal, two crystals, three crystals. Then your next row, you start again. You'll be winding up on this side. The next row, you're going to be doing the same thing. One crystal, two crystal, three crystal. So that the three crystals and the one crystal wind up zigzagging. I don't know if I'm explaining that real well, but you'll see it as we are going. Okay, so now we have our seed bead bar and our first crystal. Now we're going to put two crystals in the center. Seed bead, crystal, seed bead, crystal, seed bead. And we're going back down through the bar below, through the center bead, so we can fill in that space. That is if we can see. Okay. 
going through the center cube. Make sure you don't come out the seed bead, just through the cube. And pull. If it gets a little tangled, just pull it out, pull it back down again. So now we have our first and second space filled. We're going to go up through the third bottom cube without touching that seed bead down there. Well, you can touch it, just don't go through it. And now we're going to put three crystals. So we start with the seed bead. Crystal, seed bead, crystal, seed bead, crystal, seed bead. Now I have three. And I'm going to go back up through that third cube to fill in that space. Okay, so now we've started our zigzag pattern. We have one, two, and three. We're on the side where there are three, so we're starting off again with one. So we're going to pick up one seed bead, one crystal, another seed bead, and two cubes. I'm going to pull that down, holding the thread taut, so this is all tight here, and go back up through those two crystals. The threads should be sitting next to each other. Now, I didn't hold this tight enough, so if you could see there's a big space there. I'm just going to pull my cube down so it's sitting next to the other, and I'm going to give a good tug on that so I can bring it back down to where it needs to be. Now it's nice and tight next to that crystal. So now we have two cubes for a cube bar. We need one more. Pick up another cube. Go through the top of the second cube. Pull. They sit next to each other. Go back up the third cube. Nice and tight. And down the center cube. And again, working on our zigzag. We're going to do two crystals, so we're going to pick up seed bead, crystal, seed bead, crystal, seed bead, oops, that's it, two, and we're going to go back down through the middle, the middle cube, without coming out, without coming out the seed bead, just the cube. Now we still have one blank spot to fill in, so we're going up through the bottom of the lower bar, the last cube, and we're going to add three. Three crystals with seed beads between. Seed bead, crystal, seed bead, crystal, seed bead, crystal, and a seed bead. Now we're going to go up through the bottom of that last cube bead in the bar. Can you see the pattern starting? And on the end we'll wind up with doing two between each bar just so that they meet evenly and there's usually depending on whether I'm using a magnetic clasp or a uh, or making the toggle bar if I'm making the toggle bar two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven there's usually eleven of these stations total including the two ends to make a bracelet that is seven and a half inches, I believe. Yep, that would make a seven and a half inch bracelet. But because I'm going to be using a, uh, yeah, 
magnetic clasp, I add one more station. So each one of these stations is, let me take this rule, probably about an inch. Yeah. Just a little bit less than an inch. So if you want to adjust the size of your bracelet, you can do it by either adding or taking away a station or just if you want to make it just a tiny bit bigger adding a third crystal on the first and the last doing three three and three instead of two two and two on the first and the last station okay I'm gonna do this one more time and then I'm gonna move to finishing off the other um, bracelet to show you how to put on the magnetic clasp and I do a little uh, I do a little design at the top to cover up the the thread. Okay, so we have we have three beads here. We're going to start a new station with one crystal, seed bead, crystal, seed bead, and two cubes. Bring them down. Try to hold it taut. Then you're going to go back up through those two cube beads. See, it's trying to get away from me, so I'm grabbing the original thread, pulling. Pull the thread down so it sits next to the other cube bead. Then I go back up through that first cube bead and pull it nice and tight. Come back down through the second one. And now we're going to add our third cube bead for that cube bead uh, bridge. So I picked up a cube bead. I'm going back down through the top of the second. Then I'm going back up through the third and back down through the second again because I want to be coming out the middle to fill in that gap. Now it's flipped over but no big deal either way you just flip the rest of the bracelet it'll flip all by itself once you put that second part in. So at this point we have one bead we're going to do two in the center. Seed bead, crystal, seed bead, crystal and a seed bead. We're coming out the top of the uh, cube bead bridge going down through the center cube bead in the lower cube bead bridge and then back up through the uh, third of the lower cube bead bridge. Now it looks a little cockeyed when you're looking at it but the bracelet comes out really nice. And if it looks too cockeyed, just check yourself. Make sure you only have one seed bead between each. Because sometimes I personally have picked up two at a time without realizing it. And then it's really cockeyed. Okay, so we have one, two. Now we're going to do three. Pick up a seed bead, crystal, seed bead crystal, seed bead, and crystal, and another seed bead. Bring it down, go back up, through that last blank space, and you're on, you've finished another station. Now what I do every once in a while, just so I don't have to worry about keeping it, uh, making sure it's all tight, you can even do this at the end of each station to make it easier, but I don't. I take my needle and thread and I do a half hitch knot. What I do is I take my needle and I go under the thread 
that's uh, between the two cubits. Pull it through and make a loop. Put my needle through the loop and then I pull it over to the right. Now this is all nice and tight and it's not going anywhere. So the next time I start a bridge, I didn't do that here. See, this is what happens if you don't. When you put it down, it can fall apart. But that's a good place to, for you to be able to stop and start again. But just to begin the bridge again, to show you the beginning of the bridge again, I'll do that one more time. We always start with one crystal, a seed bead, a crystal, and a seed bead. Seed bead, crystal, seed bead. And you pick up two cube beads, slide them down, try to hold that nice and tight, and then go, see it's trying to fall out, so pull it up tight, go back up through the two cube beads, pull down, they're sitting next to each other. Go back up through the first Q bead. Down through the second Q bead. You have two Q beads on that Q bead bar. Pick up a third Q bead. You're coming out the bottom of the second. Go back through the top of the second. Pull that next to it, so you have three sitting next to each other, then you go up the bottom of the third, down the top of the middle, and you're ready to fill in number two and number three. Two beads here, three beads here, and then you start all over again. So this is a good place for you to pause your video. I'm going to move these things aside and I'm going to start showing how to finish this off with a magnetic clasp. Get rid of these guys. Now like I said on the end of the bracelet you're going to have the same as the beginning. Instead of zigzag, one, two, and three, you're going to have two, two, and two. So, I'm at the point where I have as many stations as I want, the length that I want, close to the length that I want. I have one more station to add, so that one is going to be with two crystals in between instead of one, two, and three. So I'm going to pick up a uh, seed bead. Crystal. Seed bead. Crystal and a seed bead. Picking up two cube beads. Pulling it down, going back up through those two Q beads, pulling it tight, trying to hold it tight, which doesn't happen all the time, but eventually, and pull them right next to each other. Go back up through the first cube down through the second cube, pick up my third cube, I'm coming at the bottom of number two, going through the top of number two, pulling that so the third one is sitting next to it, go back up the bottom of number three, and down the center of number two, and I'm going to fill in two crystals between each set of uh, Q beads. So I'm going to change the color up here. 
because I did a multicolor. But same difference. Seed bead, crystal, seed bead, crystal, seed bead. And I'm going through the middle. The middle cube going back up through the end cube. Put my last two beads. Seed bead. Crystal. Seed bead. Crystal. Seed bead. So we're all done here and at this point I definitely am going to do a half hitch knot which is what you would do if you're running out of thread you should always be probably at the end of a uh, cube station do that half hitch knot that I showed you before I'm coming out the top of the third cube bead I'm going to go underneath the thread between those two cube beads make a loop go through the loop with my needle and pull it over to the right I'm going to do that one more time to make sure it's secure under the thread bridge that's between those two cubes make a loop put my needle through the loop and pull it tight and I'll go down through a couple of beads up and down a couple of beads to uh, make sure it's you never cut your thread where you knotted it so I'm just weaving see this one is a little bit loose can you see how I did this last one a little loose I'm just gonna go back down through all those beads just in case this happens to you through the cube underneath the cube bridge underneath I'll pull it tight it's nice and tight there now and I'm going to do a half hitch knot in this spot by going through a thread bridge that's under it making a loop and pulling that loop and I'm just going to weave through a couple more beads because I don't want to cut my thread off there. I'll go back. I'm a little anal when it comes to this weaving off. Just weave up and down once or twice after you've made your last knot and cut my thread. So, and normally you need a scissor to do that. Okay. I just kind of pull that up as close as I can to my work. Clip it off. Now this is where you would learn how to, if you don't already know, how to add thread which is pretty much the same thing. You make a knot and you weave it through. So I need to pull up a little bit more thread here for the class. I'm gonna do like a half an arm's length, a little bit more. Should be more than enough. Now you're gonna watch me struggle with the uh, needle and thread because I have to put this really close to my eyes. I will be probably out of camera to thread it I flattened out my thread and I'm going to try the wrong end of the needle. That won't work. So I really can't see this this far away from me. So trying to stay in camera is not working. Okay, sorry guys, out of camera to do this. There we go. 
I have to have the perfect angle to be able to see it. Now when I'm putting an, uh, on a weave a magnetic clasp, I like a double thread. So I'm pulling this thread so that the ends are kind of close to each other. What I'm going to do is get these things out of my way. So I'm going to go down like, I guess the second set, set of uh, cubes underneath it in the center. And I'm actually going to go up one cube down the next cube make a half hitch knot by putting my needle between underneath the thread between two cubes making a loop and remember I've got double thread here putting my needle through pull that tight so it just sits right under there. Then I'm going to weave my wave back, my wave. I'm going to weave my way back up to the top by going through. It doesn't matter which crystals, as long as you're following the thread paths. I'm going up through these three, actually two crystals, and out the top which would be a great place to start, but I prefer my knot to be not to be in a straight line from where I'm working. So I'm going to go down the second cube and up the other side, the third cube. Make another half hitch knot I'm telling you, I'm really anal about this. All of this is probably not necessary. What I want to do is I want to be coming out of the middle. So now I'm going down through that bead and back up through the middle. This is where I'm going to put on my clasp. And when I cut the excess bead off the bottom, we're coming out the middle now. When I cut the excess thread off of here, there is no way on this earth that this thread is going to come untangled. So I just pull it really close, zip it off, and we're ready to put on our clasp. Now I usually, I do have one with a magnet on there. How many seed beads did I put on there? I actually just did two, but I'm going to take three seed beads, one, two, three, go through the loop of my magnetic clasp, we've got a double thread, then I'm going to go back through those three seed beads, come down, pull that magnet nice and tight. Now I am in the center of the cube bead bridge. I'm pulling my thread tight and holding it there. I'm going to make another half hitch knot, go under the threads, and pull this thread tight, make my loop, go through the double threaded loop, pull it tight, and I'm going to go back up through that center cube bead, through the seed beads, and through the loop on the uh, magnetic clasp. I am actually now, being the anal person that I am, going to go through that loop on the magnetic clasp two more times. One, 
Well, how about three? Two. Three. You've got a nice thick piece of thread that's uh, got a good grip. Then I'm going to go back down through those three seed beads, back through the cube bead, and that should be nice and tight. This is, Fireline is a very strong thread. But I'm still, and you can't, you can see practically no thread. I mean, you barely notice that that thread is there. So at this point, I usually put a little design on here because I like, so I'll go back up through the, you don't need to do this, but you'll need to finish off the way I'm going to finish off. I came back up through that first cube bead. I pick up three seed beads. I go back down through the middle. Kind of makes the top a little fancy. So it makes a little loop here. Then I go back up through the other side. It's also securing that clasp. Do the same thing. I'm coming out the top of the outside cube bead on the cube bead bridge and going back down through the middle. Now, this time I've got, I've got your little loops on either side of that class. This time I'm going to go back down through the center beads all the way down through the cube in the next cube bead bridge. I have a feeling that this video is going to be a little long. I make my half hitch knot there by going, pull this tight, go underneath the thread between the two cube beads, make a loop, pull it through, I do it twice, make a loop, pull it through, and then weave down through a couple of beads, coming out a cube bead, go back up to the next uh, couple of beads. I can't get my needle in there, so I look like a fool, and I hope I'm in camera. Okay, I'm just going up through, I got through the first crystal and the seed bead. And that's a good enough place to cut it off. This way, I'm cutting it far away from where I've actually knotted it. Which makes the knot more secure. And then, you repeat the process on the other side which, since we're already 43 minutes long, I'm going to let you just stop here and rewind to go back and look at how you put on the other side of the clasp. I hope you enjoyed this video. I am going to do another video on how to do the uh, the beaded toggle because I think they're perfect for people with metal allergies and they're really very pretty and easy to put on and take off. I do love magnetic class but not everybody can wear metal. So just the toggle is very secure. I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for my future videos and hopefully in the next day or two I'll be able to do that uh, that beaded clasp. Have a wonderful, blessed day.